Hey everyone, Jared here from Gearhead Grind, doing another video for you today. This week I'm going to be focusing on the GM Full Float 14 bolt rear end and how to disassemble that and then I am going to do a disc brake conversion on it. I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible. There are quite a few videos out there of guys doing pretty lengthy breakdowns. Um, so for example, in this video, I do not plan on going through actually installing the 488 gears I'm going to put in it or the locker in great detail but I'm gonna focus more on just the disassembly. So what you would need to know if you're on the trail doing a quick fix, like pulling an axle, something like that, how to remove the front pinion, very, very easy on these, and then how to remove the brake drums in order to do the disc brake kit, and then which disc brake kit I'm gonna be putting on. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it in a nutshell for this video. Hopefully it, it's pretty brief for somebody looking to do this and just cover the basics. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so this is a partially disassembled 14 bolt because I started taking it apart and then I was like, wait a second, maybe I should actually record this to help somebody out. So I'll take you through, I mean, the tricky part that some people may need to know is the uh, rear brake drum remove, or yeah, the brake drum removal. Uh, so I'll go through that. Everything else on this is very, very straightforward and simple. So let's start off with the axles because that is what makes this particular rear axle assembly is so awesome is the fact that it's the flo full floating axles. So here on the right outer side of the axle, we have the, the actual axle flange itself. So you have eight bolts that go around here in addition to just the eight normal lug nuts. So you can actually leave the wheel on the truck and remove the axle on this, which is very, very cool if you need to do a trail fix. Hopefully you don't because these things are pretty stout, but if you're running big tires, going through rocks or other high torque areas, it happens. So these are three quarter inch head bolts. So you remove all eight of them and then you simply are able to just slide this axle out of there as easy as that. So that axle's out. You know, if you're taking it out for the first time, obviously this one has been out, so it's much easier. So if you're taking it out for the first time, you're gonna, you know, need to shimmy it a little bit and play with it. But it does basically slide out as easy as that. There's nothing holding the retaining, the splines in the middle. So around here at the back, this is, of course, the, uh, the main part of the differential itself. This is a stock one basically so what it looked like coming fresh out of a truck this particular rear axle is out of a 1977 k20 to the best of my knowledge so what i will be doing um you know that axle's already out the front pinion's out so i'll show you that but you basically want to come in here you know if you're going to be removing this and pull all the the main bolts take whatever measurements you need to take ahead of time which I'll either cover in another video or you can look through a very in-depth tutorial of how to re-gear these and install a locker. But very easy to take off the back plate. You know, you just pull the bolts, comes right off. The, the cool part about this axle as well is the removable front pinion. Um, so this still needs to be shimmed out properly and everything to work with the ring gear itself. But this is very easy to replace. It's basically six bolts on the front of it. I don't remember the size. It's probably also three quarter, um, but if not, I would guess it's a five eighths. I'll have to go back and double check that. This one's actually in really good shape. The bearings are good. It spins freely. It wasn't leaking, anything like that, but it's still going to get fully rebuilt. So that's fun. I'll, I'll cover that later as well. But once that is removed, you are left with this nice big hole in here and you can inspect the bearings inside the differential itself. And, and uh, you know, if you ever did need to do a trail fix, the fact that this comes off the front makes things much, much easier if you need to get that pinion off or do something on the front of this axle. All right, next is the removal of the brake drum itself. I'm gonna go into this in more detail as well, but I'm, I wanna show you it taken apart and then I'll actually show you how to disassemble it as well. So please keep in mind this video is for this style of drum brake only where it, the whole thing does slide off in one assembly. It's got the bearings in there and all that. The lugs are part of the brake drum assembly itself and it comes off as one unit. You can see the, the shoes and everything here I still need to remove so I can go over that in brief detail. But essentially 
on the snout here. So when the brake drum is still in and you're looking at the snout of it, we have, you know, the, the axle out itself. And then you'll be able to look in that assembly, which I'll show you on the other side and see a few things in there. So first off, what you're going to see is a ring like this. It's got six indents on it. They do make special tools to get this out. It does make it a little easier. It's only like 15 bucks. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. I have one coming. I did not have one for this particular job. So somebody has had this axle part before because I can, you know, there's damage on these little points that was not from me getting it apart. Um, but yeah, it is clear somebody took this apart. And so around that guy, you'll see the little um, spider type gear there, or not gear, but the little clip. So it's got the tabs on it to be able to lock this particular guy in place, this locking ring. So what you'll need to do is come in with a punch and knock out one or however many of these tabs were holding this in place to allow this to spin freely. Then what I do is I come in with a little punch if I don't have the tool. Um, I do have a special brass one, not this one, but most people are just gonna have this style punch. So you'll basically, you know, it spins off lefty loosey. So you'll punch this way with a hammer and get this thing to spin. And then I actually just go in and spin it by hand. Then we use a set of needle nose pliers to pull this guy out. There's nothing holding it in place. It just has a little tab to prevent it from spinning. So you just gotta kind of shimmy it off the, you know, off the threads here and get it out. Then behind it is another locking nut here. This one, there's nothing, at least on mine, there's nothing holding it in place. And this one wasn't actually torqued either, so it spun out freely once I just got past the little initial uh, torque that was on it. And then after that, there is just a normal kind of washer holding it in place. Once you get out these four items, the brake drum literally just pulls out. So what I did is I just took my little engineer hammer, put some pressure on the bottom of the brake drum, and then used my right hand to just knock around the outside of it, freeing things up and just pulling on it to keep that pressure on the bottom. And thankfully it was not seized in place, you know, because somebody has had this apart before, nothing was seized in there. And I was able to get that drum off. The drum is heavy. Keep that in mind. Do not drop it on your foot. Be prepared for when this thing releases to gently let that brake drum down. Um, you know, so that's why I don't have this mounted any higher just in case the brake drum fell off or something. It's pretty easy now to deal with. All right, then on the inside of this, to actually get this assembly out, there are four bolts holding it to the actual axle housing itself. Those are three quarter bolt head bolts. So they're gonna be half inch bolts. Basically, I'm just gonna use a half inch impact to blow all these out. Uh, but before I do that, I used a three eighths, um, wrench, uh, one of the brake line wrenches to remove the rear brake line from here. And then I'm also going to remove this nut as well from the back to allow the whole assembly up here for the, uh, the brake drums or, you know, the, the drum pads to be able to, to release. So this is an inch and eighth nut here. I'm also going to use my half inch impact to remove that, remove the line. Then we're going to pull these four bolts and this whole thing should come off. All right, I'm going to do that right now. Cool. So one thing I actually forgot to mention there is in the reason I pulled the actual pads themselves is basically the front of this has a nut on it as well. Uh, I don't know what size it is. I just threw a crescent wrench on there when I was impacting the back of it. So the back one that fits the impact is an inch and an eighth. And then the front is a little bit bigger than that, maybe an inch and a quarter or so. Um, so yeah, hold it in place. I mean, you might get lucky and try to pin this without removing the pads, but I did have a uh, spring puller at my disposal here to be able to pull those springs off real quick and just get these off. 
So, I mean, I know I'm not gonna be reusing this stuff. I, I do also know how these drums go back together, so I'm not being super careful here. Um, but now, I'm basically just gonna be able to go in and remove these front four bolts and should be able to pull this assembly off. Normally I do wear hearing protection for this, so keep that in mind, wear hearing protection. Yep, there we go. Everything comes off. E-brake cable, all that's off now. So that's it. We got the naked rear axle assembly and time to get all the disc brake parts together and show you how to put those on. All right, here's what's hopefully a better full look at the process. So you can see in here that the little, you know, you see the, the six pin thing that I was referring to. And then in here, there's a little tab. So basically I'm gonna have to knock that over right now with a hammer and then get in here and pull everything else out. So I'm gonna see if I can record this in somewhat close detail. That special socket makes everything a hundred times easier. It's kind of like dialing an old-timey phone. And then this ring, I've had good luck getting out with the magnet. Yep, there we go. All right. There we go. That one was super easy. All right, so now I'm gonna do the, the same thing I did on the other side. that helps somebody figure out how to get the uh, the brake drums off it's pretty easy once you see it um, and then yeah having that special little six dimple tool will really speed up the process like I said it's, it's about 15 bucks I have one in the mail um, but you can just do it with simple things that you probably have in your home garage all right I'm gonna take a little break now and then once I come back I'm gonna go through the uh, disc brake setup I'm gonna run and uh, take you through the details of that and then how that installs at a high level. All right, let's do it. 